Hey, John here. Let's talk about random numbers and how you can generate some for a simple test app in C and C++. All right. So, uh, well, I have to take pause for a minute here. Look, random numbers can get very complicated. And as it is right now, what I'm looking at is the simplest form. This is an introduction to how to use the simple rand function right here that's given to you in the C standard library on any Unix POSIX system, okay? And this little disclosure is in here because it's a warning to those of you that have never used this before and you want to run off and discover the great world of random numbers or cryptography and things like that. You'll see these two are related in ways in which what I'm going to tell you in here is as the worst way to generate random numbers, okay? You do not want to do this if you are a casino and you are generating software that represents a roulette table or a kino or even bingo. This is not going to be fair is what's going to happen. This random number generator will generate numbers that will tend to be biased in one direction or another, just ever so slightly. And uh, having said all this, if you know someone who's written software like this that runs, you know, poker machines, Kino, uh, uh, betting, and or uh, roulette wheels in, in a casino, let me know. We'll team up and go down there and make a gazillion dollars. All right. And I'll touch on that when the time comes as to why this is bad. All right. The essence is there's two reasons this is bad. First of all, RAND, as the manual will say... The RAND page on Unix says this is a pseudo-random number generator. They, they're not really random. They aren't random. Not even not really. They absolutely are not random, okay? The second reason is uh, how we manipulate them mathematically and what I'm going to discuss in this little uh, tutorial here, all right? So having all that warning aside, let's dive in because this is hugely useful just to generate a bunch of junk test data for a simple program, and that's what we're talking about here. How can I just get something that is good enough to test a program, and that's really what this is for, okay? All right, so uh, what do we got? The usual boilerplate stuff up here. Make sure you install, uh, you include standard lib in order to get the rand function, right? Uh, the usual namespace stuff there. Let's generate, uh, what, 10 random numbers and just print them out, okay? Let's go over here, get the command line, and make the program. Okay, it's already compiled. That is rand1, okay? Oh, look, we got some random numbers. Okay, let's run it again. Oh, look, it's the exact same random numbers, you might ask. <laughs> How random is that? <laughs> well, there's one thing that, 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 that suggests they're not really random, okay? Um, but this is an incredible useful feature, okay? Because if you write a program and you use this rand function to generate data for it, and you're modifying your program and you want to compare your output across, you know, I'm going to run it and then I'm going to run it a second time and I want to compare the output, you don't really want all the numbers to be completely different every time you run your program. So by default, if you use it like this, what this generates are pseudo-random numbers between zero and some big number value that's going to be the same set of random numbers every time you run your program, okay? That's really what's going on here. All right. So uh, let's have a look, see it at, uh, at random number two. What is this thing going to do? Well, uh, we can seed the random number or the random number generator, we say. A seed is what is the first value? What What is the random number generator, the RNG, very common uh, abbreviation? What What is it going to use? for its first mathematical value, all right? I don't want to get into all the details of how different random number generators actually work, but the bottom line is it has a current value, and that current value can be thought of as a seed, and it's used to generate the next value, and these things chain off themselves. Once you give a random number generator a seed, no matter what the value is, all of the subsequent numbers are going to be reproduced in this very specific order. We already saw that by uh, running it with a default seed. If you read the documentation, uh, the, uh, um, the default seed is 1. So if I set it to 1, 2, 3, 4, oops, 
what we'll get is a different number, a set of random numbers, okay? And again, they're all the same every time because they all start with the same seed, right? Here's rand one, which we know because we read the manual, it seeds it to one. And, and it generates this 180 blah, 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 blah number. Well, RAND2 started with this 479 number. And both of these, granted they start at a different spot, uh, they will run off on, each on their own in the same sequence of these pseudo-random values every time we run the program. Okay, that's all exciting. But what if I want to generate, rather than, you know, a number, random numbers between zero and some unknown value? which is what we're doing so far. They all look big, but what are they? How, what's up with all that, right? I meant to say uh, clear. And man, uh, actually, if you just type in man rand, what quite often happens is you might get a random, uh, a, 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 a manual page for a different kind of a random number generator. This is the one for the open SSL security library. Like I said, there's a relationship between random numbers and cryptography. The one that we're using is in section three of the manual, not the one that's in the cryptographic library. Okay, here's where it says, make sure you include this file if you want to use it, because it declares the stuff it needs to know. It declares the rand function, and we use this srand function, which I just showed you to set this so-called seed. So what it does is it, uh, the manual goes on to explain how this thing, you know, what, what can you get out of it? Well, it says it'll return Pseudo random integer in the range of zero to rand max inclusive. This is critical, all right? Uh, so mathematically, we, we use the square brackets, right? It's an inclusive range between zero and rand max. If it did not include zero, right, there would be a parenthesis over here. That would mean an open ended range, right? It would be from zero to rand max, not including zero. So formally, this includes all the values between zero and rand max when it runs, whatever rand max is. And that could be different on every single operating system. Well, that's kind of annoying, isn't it? So uh, how do we then deal with this? First of all, let's print it out on the upper si operating system we're using, okay? I don't even know what it is. And then we'll go ahead and seed it to something so that we can reproduce it each time in a known way. Okay, or we could just leave it alone and know that it has been seeded to one. Uh, again, if we look at the documentation, somewhere in here it says uh, if you don't set it, SRAN sets the new seed, uh, blah, 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 blah. If these sequences are repeatable with the same seed value. If there's no seed provided, it'll automatically be seeded to one. Like I said, I read that earlier, so I knew. Okay, fine. So we could either start it with one by default or we can do this. Doesn't matter. All right, for this discussion. But what are we doing up here with this min max crud? Look at what's going on down here. Let's say I don't want zero to whatever this is, which I happen to know is about 2 billion. Let's say I want them to be between 10 and 200 inclusive. How would I do that? Well, this part is just math, just regular algebra. Take the random numbers you got now and do a modulus division by max minus min plus one because I want it to be inclusive. You have to add this extra one. You leave that out, it won't come out right. And then, of course, you add uh, the minimum to it, right? Uh, because rand starts at zero and goes up to some big value. This narrows the range of values and anchors it at 10 instead of zero, all right? And then, of course, we can print those out. So we're playing around with two little adjustments here. First, we're going to find out what that value is, and we're going to constrain the range. All right, let's make sure we compile it up. Uh, which one was that? That was uh, RAND3. And now these are much more constrained. They're going to go between 10 and 200 inclusively. All right, we can generate a lot more and see how long it takes to get there. I don't know. Now look at this RAND max value. What is that? It looks, you know, uh, I don't know what that is. Well, if you ask for it, oops. If you use a thing like the the the, the desktop calculator and say that I want to see the values in base 16 and I want to convert this to hex, what do I get? Oh my, oh me. Look at that. That is a real interesting value, isn't it? <laughs> this is the 31 that's a the maximum value you can store in an unsigned 31-bit value. 
31-bit integer, I can say. It's also the maximum positive value you can store in a 32-bit signed integer, okay? So sometimes you'll see a giant number like this. Very off. I don't have them all memorized. I know a lot of them, the powers of 2 up to, you know, I don't know, 16 or 17 or so. But uh, I don't memorize them all. This one is a pretty common one, though, because 2 billion, roughly speaking, is uh, on a 32-bit operating system, half of the memory, right? Uh, that's that's basically two gig, as we say. All right. So why am I going on about this? Well, look what happens if you do your modulus division and all this other stuff. This is not a, what I would call a clean decimal value. If you simply took this and did a modulo 1000, let's say I wanted to generate values between 0 and 90, 99, an easy way to do that would just be to take that number there and get, say modulo 1000. Right. The other malarkey I did in there was to do an inclusive range instead of, you know, an open ended range and to change the range to start at 10 instead of zero. If you started at zero and you wanted an open ended range between zero and a thousand where it includes zero, but not a thousand, you could just take the value from the random number generator and take modulo 1000 and you'd get this. What's the problem if I do that? This will favor. The values between 0 and 647 ever so slightly more than the values from 648 up to 999, if we did it this way. So one in just over 2 million tries, we would see a slight favoring of the values between 0 and 647. And that's all the edge you need to win at Vegas. That's all the edge you need to, to crack decryption. That's And it's been done. I, it has literally been done. It's been done over and over and over again. You see uh, headlines <laughs> constantly, people screwing up their cryptography by doing foolish things, all right? Because they don't take this into account, all right? Now, I don't expect every single person watching this to understand this, but if, if you're interested, you can learn more about it by going to websites like Wikipedia, in other places where they start talking about random numbers and, and how they work and different kinds of ways and how to improve them true random numbers versus pseudo random number generators. And then they get into all kinds of, uh, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, ways to do it using like, you know, people taking microphones and listening to fan noise and things like that and, 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 and converting that into randomness or taking telescopes and watching haze in the atmosphere, or even uh, you hear about people using the, the position of the wax uh, moving around inside of lava lamps and things like that. Those are pretty good random uh, number generators compared to the simple one that, that we're using from the library. And as you scroll down in here, you start finding out that there's going to be, uh, you, this is the page on random numbers, okay? Why is the NSA involved? Why are they talking about backdoors in the cryptography? If, if it's not fair, you can, you can be given an ever so slight edge and you can figure out how to crack the cryptography. And that means that all your secure communications with your web browser to your bank and your passwords and all this other stuff can be cracked and found out by people eavesdropping on your internet connection in your house, your Wi-Fi at the local Starbucks or whatever. Literally, that's all it takes. You don't believe me? Go ahead and read up about it. That's why uh, even Wikipedia makes a big stink about it. All right, so let's move on. Uh, let's say we want random numbers, but we don't want them always to be the same every single time. We want we want a more random-ish, okay? <laughs> like using quotes here, this is more random-ish, okay? To seed this thing. I could, in other words, I want a random seed from a random number generator. Well, how can I do that? And what I'm showing you here in the, oh geez, in the mid 90s, uh, a little company you may have heard of called Netscape did not do this right in their um, in their web server. And it allowed people, believe it or not, to send email into a system addressed to a non-existent user that the mail server would then send back and say, there's no such user with this name. And they were able to use that information in that bounced errant email, believe it or not, to figure out how to crack the SSL, the, the, the HTTPS link, the cryptography of the web page. 
And once they've done that, they could then reverse engineer other things about the machine and find out its 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 keys and everything else and crack uh, all of the secure web traffic. I am not kidding you. Google it. There'll be a whole story on it. What did they do wrong? They literally used the same way to seed their random number generator, which this is not really used much anymore. It's not terrible, but it's it, it's 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 better than having it hard coded by far. But what they did is they did not use the current microseconds within the current second as their seed. They used the seconds, okay? I don't want to get into all the details. The bottom line is at least I did one step better than the Internet darling of the 90s, okay? Their first draft stank. This was their second draft. I'm just saying. Okay, so what does this do? This takes the current uh, time that the operating system has, and it's going to say, I'm going to use the seed based on whatever the number of, uh, divide that, you know, how many millionths of a second since the last second has, you know, progressed until the current second. Now, if I run this program and I hit enter, this is going to be somewhat random because it'll depend on when I actually press this button within the current second. That's way better than using the number of seconds since 1970, which is what you get if you don't do it this way. If you do the naive, the more naive way, I'm just saying. Okay. Anyway, this will generate uh, a more random-ish seed value, uh, and let your uh, uh, code be a little bit better. Again, for just testing, run-of-the-mill, simple program. You just want some data. As you can see, every time I run this, I'm getting different values. All right. So these are what? What's the takeaway from all this thing? Oops. Well, the takeaway is, do you want to have reproducible random numbers or do you want to have something that's kind of randomish? All right. Use this technique here to ask what, you know, any any source of entropy would work. OK, it turns out this is a pretty easy one to use uh, to uh, seed your random number generator. All right. And if you want a bounded range and use logic like this. All right. Max minus min plus one for your range, right? Where your range is defined by the maximum value and the minimum value that you want it to ever generate. And then, of course, you need to add the minimum value. Otherwise, it'll start at zero, right? Okay, so this is a simple way to generate pseudo-random numbers that are okay-ish for testing your programs. But don't create a video poker game or build a crypto <laughs> encryption system on this. All right. So thanks for watching.